cars need of ventilators. It is not a mechanical ventilation disorder. It is pneumolysis. The lung is destroyed, inflammated, friable due to the COVID-2 attack. Virus comes to your lungs like an alien to introduce the RNA inside the cells. This injection of the RNA within the cells, it begins the reproduction in the Golgi bodies, in the lysosome, and it changes the code of that cell so that that cell is no longer producing its normal metabolites. The cell now becomes a slave and produces more and more coronavirus. And so this reproduction comes to a point where there is an explosion. Pneumolysis is a new term I propose to the world, a biological agent that is creating a bio attack and destroying the lung cells, the most fundamental cells for survival. We have used the old terminology that comes from the previous century. We need to evolve in the understanding of diseases of the lung. So pneumolysis is the term I propose because it means, pneumo means the lung, and lysis means destruction. And this extreme viral destruction from this terrible coronavirus means that it pulverizes the cells, it destroys the cells. Now, this destruction of the alveolar capillary tissue, of course, brings serious compromise to the transport of oxygen to the blood. The, we use in high altitude the oxygen transport triad, and we apply it now to COVID. And we have a pneumodynamic pump, which is the pump that moves air in and out of the lungs. The hemodynamic pump is the pump, the heart that is pumping the fluid that is blood. And this has a respiratory rate in respiration and a tidal volume. And in the heart, it has a heart rate. You see the two pumps have a rate and stroke volume and tidal volume. They have the same mechanism because it follows physics. Biology has to respect the laws of physics. So what happens when this occurs? Respiratory rate suddenly increases, tidal volume increases, heart rate increases, and stroke volume increases. Now the heart tries to compensate the lung deficiency, but it is extremely limited in its capacity to do so. And what happens on top of this, if there's hemorrhage, if there's attack, in vascular attack, hemoglobin goes down and you are in a serious compromise. So COVID-2 puts you on the summit of Mount Everest in a matter of days. It is going to a place where there's much lower pressure of oxygen. This is the highest point tolerable in extreme hypoxia where life is possible. This is what happens with COVID. It suddenly goes up to the summit of Mount Everest. On top of pneumolysis, sudden severe hypoxia in COVID-19 gives rise to an additional superimposed hepatitis edema, further aggravating hypoxemia. You don't have sufficient hemoglobin because if you go up slowly to the mountain, like we do, we adapt. How do we adapt? by increasing the number of red blood cells. And we increase gradually our red blood cells as we go to different camp levels, trying to build up the red cells. So when people reach the summit, they have enough red blood cells that you can survive at the summit of Mount Everest. But what happens in COVID? You see, if you don't have sufficient hemoglobin, you have a poor tolerance to hypoxia because according to the formula, you need a high hemoglobin and low CO2. In high altitude pulmonary edema, the lung filled with fluid can clear up in a matter of 24 or 48 hours as shown here, because the lung tissue is intact. It is not altered. While in COVID, the virus comes into the trachea, into the lungs, the amount of the lung being compromised. You see, here we can say it's beginning to be close to one-fourth of the compromise of the lung assumed. Then the disease progresses and you have half of your lungs gone 
They don't work. The virus can progress and take up most of your lungs. You have almost no surface area of gas exchange. It's just on the top. So you have lost two thirds of your lungs. And there is lower transmission of COVID-19 at high altitude where there's high ultraviolet radiation. All this and much more can be found in the reviews on recent clinical trials publication where we also propose a treatment.